Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. I got a new package in the mail today, and it contained this. This is a 27 watt mono monocrystalline solar panel, and it's foldable. So it is 12 volt, 27 watt, and it's Instapark is the brand. You can take these panels and just fold them up like that. They are rigid. They do not flex. I think if you flex them, you'll probably break them. Uh, feels like maybe a composite backing there, or feels, feels a little firmer than cardboard. Maybe fiberglass or backing or something. In here, I think you can see that little glowing red light right there. There's a five volt USB socket, two of them for charging. In this light, this does not seem to be capable of charging my iPhone. I've got an iPhone 4S, an old iPhone 4S. It's cloudy outside. I plugged it in for 10 minutes and the, you know, the charge indicator on the iPhone came on, but the battery charge on the iPhone went down by like two percentage points. So in this sunlight, it doesn't seem to be able to charge my iPhone. I, I tried hanging it up on the window. It's got these nice little loops for, for hanging on things. I think that's really cool. The reason why I bought this is because I wanted to make a compact, foldable, lightweight, easy to use in car battery maintainer. So you can buy battery maintainers online, but they're usually like ridiculously low wattage, like five watts or less. And I just, I don't know. I don't think that that's really like enough wattage to maintain a battery properly. So uh, 27 watts, I figured that would be pretty good. And uh, it's got this, inside this little pop pouch here, it's got a DC pigtail that comes out of it. Now you could use this, but the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to snip this off and I'm going to replace the connector with Anderson connectors because I, I don't like DC plugs. They're, they're useless. This comes with this cable as well. Um, I don't think this is actually intended for car charging. Maybe it is. I don't know. But I think the way it works is, yeah. So you plug it, you plug it in like this. And then it also comes with this little adapter. So you get like two barrel plug adapters. It says this adapter is for the Duracell Power Dome or other compatible battery packs. I don't have a Duracell Power Dome. I don't care. So I'm just going to cut all that off and replace it with Anderson connectors. Because I want to plug my battery maintainer into the cigarette lighter port on my vehicle instead of having to attach it to the battery directly. I've I've actually got a number of solar panels and a charge controller and uh, alligator clips. I've been using these alligator clips here. And I've just been attaching to the battery terminals directly, but that's a pain in the ass, right? Because you gotta like open up the hood, you gotta attach it to the battery terminals, you gotta put the solar panel on top, you got wires sticking out. I mean, I just, I don't like it. So the whole point of this project is to make something that goes inside the vehicle on top of the dash that I can fold up and put in the glove box when I'm not using. What I bought is, I bought a Milliard 12 volt car outlet plug extension with status light. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna chop it up too, because what I really want is I want this plug. I don't really care about this portion. I want this plug and I want that to come off of the battery terminal of my charge controller here. This is just a cheap ass uh, HQRP char charge controller, PWM charge controller that I got off of Amazon years back. So I'm gonna put this end of the plug on the battery terminal there so that I can plug it right into the cigarette lighter. I'm really curious like how much power this thing is actually generating. And the other advantage of putting these Anderson connectors on it is um, I have power meters that already have Anderson connectors on them. So I can, you know, if I don't wanna use the charge controller directly, if I wanna put a power meter in between, I can can do that and get a feel for like how much power is going into the battery, how much power is coming out of the solar charge controller, that sort of thing. Okay, cut that dude off. Oh no, I broke it. <laughs> All right. Without fail, every time I do one of these projects, I end up bringing the entire <laughs> toolbox upstairs. So what I'm going to do here is because this wire is this coaxial type with, you know, the, the one conductor on the outside, I'm not sure that I can get a good crimp on that. So I'm going to solder instead. Since I'm going to sacrifice this cable already, I'm going to use some of this wire for the soldering pigtail. Don't need this end. Bye-bye. Very, very small wire in there. Hope I can crimp onto that.
I'm just gonna make my pigtail about yay long. I don't think it has to be super long or anything. Set this aside for a moment. I'm gonna flip this over. Okay, now I'm not sure which end is positive and which one's negative, so let's go ahead and test that. Uh, fortunately, I'm gonna have to have this flipped over to do so, I believe. Probably the white wire is positive. Yes, the white wire is positive. Let's tin this. Time to join. All right, and then the final insulator for both of them together. Okay, now I don't know how long that'll last, but um, it should last long enough. Now we got a nice, strong pigtail that I can connect those to. Let's go ahead and double check. Make sure that we are indeed still getting positive on the red here, and I didn't change anything. Yeah, okay, good. Time to crimp. I was worried that would happen. This is not very thick wire. Seems like kind of a strong connection. It's not really that great, though. There we go, that's better. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of shrink wrap for additional mechanical strength for what that's worth. Yeah, that'll do. All right, let's get our wattage meter and see how much power we get out of this. Source and load, so we'll plug this into the source end. I don't even think that's enough power to light it up. 12.56 volts. Maybe just not a whole lot of amps. All right, so what I've decided to do is I've decided to make the pigtails, the Anderson connector pigtails for this uh, charge controller really short. And uh, my logic there is it'll be less to like, you know, tie up or zip tie or whatever and I can just throw it in the glove box pretty easily. All right, let's go see how this thing works. Let's see if this works and how it works. So I'm gonna pull out my phone charger. I don't need that. I'm going to unfurl my solar panel. I've got my nice little Anderson connector sticking out there. Uh, so I'm gonna stick this out on the dash, like so. And let's see. So I'm gonna connect the battery side here. So this is, no, the solar panel side. This is the solar panel one, so this cable to the Anderson connector. I'm gonna tuck that up under the dash because that doesn't need to be out in the sunlight or hanging and straining the cord. And then I'm gonna try to put this power meter on here. I don't think that it's generating enough power for me to use it, but um, I'm curious. So that's the source side. And then plug this in here. I'll flip that around so we get the LED. There we go. There's the LED from the battery. Plug that in like so. Oh, hey, there we go, it booted up. So I don't know if you can read that or not, but it says it is charging 1.1, 1.3 watts, 13.11 volts. If I look at the charge controller here, 
Uh, steady green light is normal. So that's charging. Cool. So that seems to be working. It's pretty cool. And then, you know, I can just leave all of this here. I'm not going to I'm not going to always have this power meter attached because I don't really need that, but um, I could leave all of this plugged in. Uh, it's a relatively inexpensive system. I mean, I, I think I paid like maybe 20 bucks for the charge controller back in the day, a long time ago. You can probably get them for even less now. Uh, solar panel, I think I paid like 80 bucks for, something like that. Uh, cables like $12. $12. So, I mean, if, if it does get stolen for some reason, it's not the end of the world, right? But the great thing is, uh, when I'm ready to drive off, I mean, I could just leave it up there if I wanted to, but my intent is to simply disconnect all of the components, fold it back up, and put it in the glove box right there. I've got some other stuff in there right now, but that's the intent. And then the, the other cool thing about this is, let's see, once we get this unfurled here, the other cool thing about this is it's got that, uh, it's got those USB cables. So um, maybe instead of using this thing, which actually drains my chassis battery, um, I can just take the USB cable off plug it into the end here, take my phone, charge my phone up. That'd be pretty cool. All right, so it is the following day and we are in some direct sunlight here. Uh, it's still charging. Um, I just wanted to show how many watts it pulls in a more direct sunlight. I mean, granted, it's like, it's winter, it's March right now, so. You know, the sun isn't as strong as it's going to be in summer or anything. But I just wanted to show how many watts it draws in more direct sunlight. It says it's pulling in about 7 watts, between 6.5 and 7, to charge the battery. So that's a pretty good trickle charge. The battery voltage is at 12.7 volts right now. Um, I had a problem last night. I, I came in this morning to check my battery voltage and it read nine volts, which is like, you know, like totally dead battery, right? Uh, and that was from the cigarette lighter here. So I put my multimeter on the battery in the engine bay, you know, directly on the battery and it said like 12 volts, right? At that point, by the time I put my multimeter on the, on the engine bay battery, it had been charging for a while. Uh, but there was like a two volt difference between the engine bay and the cigarette lighter. And so I think what happened, I've got a spade connector that connects the cigarette lighter to the fuse panel down here. It was a little loose and maybe it was on like part of the connector that had a little bit of oxidation or something. It was registering a lot of resistance. So I took that spade connector off and I used some pliers to clamp it down a little bit and put it back on and jiggled it and it's fine now. Um, so I lost a little bit of charge last night because of that, I think. But you know, once, once I fixed that, it was back up to like 12 volts and it's, it's clearly charging now. So just a little tip, you know, uh, if you're going to set up one of these in, in cab, in car chargers, make sure that your cigarette lighter voltage is the same as your, your engine bay voltage or very close. Um, you don't want to have a lot of resistance between there. Now that this thing is behaving a little better, let's see if I can get a charge on my cell phone too. So my cell phone's at 66%. Let's wait a little while and we'll see if it goes up. It's 332. 67, so it's 3, 334, 335, probably in a minute, and it's at 67%. So yeah, so that'll charge my cell phone up just fine. Now, when the engine's running, I think it makes more sense to use one of these USB adapters that plugs into the, you know, the cigarette lighter, uh, because you're already generating power with the engine, and this is kind of spotty reliable. I mean, if you want to, why not? But definitely when you're parked, if you're parked somewhere and you don't want to idle your engine and you just want to charge your cell phone, I think this is fantastic. It's a great way to charge your cell phone. So this kind of does double duty, you know? It'll, it'll charge up your, your engine battery, 
And it'll also charge up your cell phone if you don't want to burn gas to do it. So yeah, I, I like it. Uh, and like I said, I'm not going to leave this on here because this actually draws power, draws quite a bit of power. Um, I think it charges much more efficiently without this in line. So I will always leave this off. But, you know, it's really nice that I can connect it quickly whenever I want. That's, that's the thing that I really like about it. If I want to check the status of my, of my battery, I've got a voltage meter over here, but I mean, it's, I don't even think it works. It's like stuck in the middle all the time. Vehicle voltage meters are notoriously terrible. All right, so I wasn't happy with the performance of the 27 watt solar panel, folding solar panel. So I replaced it. Uh, well, I didn't replace it. I bought an additional 60 watt folding solar panel. And that's what you see right here. It just barely fits on the dash. I've got a 1971 Chevy C10 pickup and uh, it just barely fits on the dash. If I fold this, this part right here with the control adapter, the USB port and everything underneath the panel, it fits. I've also got a Ford Flex 2009 and it also fits on the dash of the Ford Flex, although it's an even tighter fit. And I also have to fold it under like that, but it does fit. So that's great. I mean, this is a fantastic panel for charging your car battery uh, inside the car. Now, what I like about this panel is it's actually capable of charging the battery in a reasonable time frame. The, uh, the 27 watt panel is capable of charging the battery, but it takes so long. It takes more than a week to charge a battery from like 25% drained. Instead of charging up your, your car battery in greater than five days, you're charging up your car battery in three days. And that's a reasonable time frame because the way I usually use this vehicle is I'll drive it maybe once a week and I won't drive it very far. I'll drive it a very short distance. So it doesn't have time to recharge the battery as I'm driving. So with lead acid batteries, what you want is you want a full charge on the battery at least once a week, at least. Lead acid batteries do not like to be partially discharged. It damages them versus lithium batteries. Lithium ba batteries prefer to be partially dis discharged. So they're, they're totally different, but Lead acid batteries need to be charged all the time in order to maintain their condition. So that's what this does. This provides a way to uh, actually charge up the battery in a reasonable amount of time so that the battery doesn't sulfate. And that's what you want. I think this 27 watt panel, you know, if, if you can guarantee that your battery is always almost charged, when you stop the vehicle, then the 27 watt panel is fine because it does really great. You know, it does a really great job at maintaining the battery, but it's such a trickle charge. 0.5 amps is not much. It's going to take you a long time to charge the battery if it's discharged in any way. Uh, that's what I think this, this 60 watt panel is uh, more ideal for. Anyway, this is Jesse with Create This. Hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, click the like button. All these products that I'm using here today, I'll have a link down below in the description of the video. So check that out. They're on Amazon. Uh, if you click the links, it gives me a little commission. Price isn't any different for you since they're commissioned links versus non-commissioned links. It's the same price. I just get a little kickback and it helps me support the channel and helps me continue buying you know, cool stuff to, to review and play with here on the channel for your benefit. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.